So we've got a really diverse customer base, and as I often say, no one's going to pick Brightcove's products and solutions to manage and deliver all their video if it doesn't have the proper integrations for them to make money in doing so. So that means you know, our relationship with Google and DoubleClick, right, or Freewheel and all these ad servers is critical. And what we found is that those relationships need to constantly be evolving as more and more opportunities to deliver content are presenting themselves to our customer base, our publishers and our broadcasters. And so, uh, for example, we're here at the, at the Akamai booth and we've been doing some sessions around mobile monetization. And as the shift of consumption has shifted to mobile, uh, we've, we've run into, or we've noticed our customers have run into a lot of uh, challenges in how to deliver ads there the way they do on desktop. And so we have a range of approaches for them that we're here talking about, including you know, our native SDKs for iOS and Android. And then of course, to your earlier question, um, we've got the server-side ad insertion technology that we got through the Unicorn acquisition called Brightcove Once. We've got a great legacy business, of course, and all the publishers who've worked with Video Cloud, the end-to-end -end OVP, for a long time. Uh, and I think what's been exciting for Brightcove in the last year or so is for us to get the story out about sort of Brightcove 2.0 and about how we have a very modular set of products and services that allow us to help with very specific solutions that are needed from our customer base and it kind of gets our foot in the door with a really wide range of companies that you see around the halls here uh, at NAB, I guess, or rather the customers who are here visiting companies here. Um, so for just you know, transcoding, you can use Zencoder for server-side ad insertion, you can use uh, Brightcove once. We've got our Perform Player Management Service, which is the best HTML5 player out there, which has a rich set of plugins for Nielsen and Comscore and Onmature and all of the ad servers. So, for us, there's a lot of opportunity uh, to, to satisfy a number of different things that our broadcasters and publishers might want to do. And uh, I think kind of the two newer things that we're spending, we're spending time on here uh, would be including uh, the new Once Live product, which is 24 by 7 uh, delivery of live linear with dynamic ad replacement, and that's done on the server side, again, using Once. And then Once VOD is kind of gotten a refresh where it now has a little bit more in the way of um, status notifications about the jobs. It's got the Zencoder uh, transcoding engine under the hood, so it's really, really scalable and fast and provides high quality video. It's a lot of exciting stuff that our customers want to hear about. Because this is NAB, the broadcasters have sort of the equivalent of an OVP for their workflow in legacy broadcast infrastructure. And what they're wondering is, well, which of these pieces do I keep, or does Brightcove allow me to do a lot of this you know, when I'm moving more towards IP delivery? And so our relationship with those kind of um, legacy companies a little bit upstream from us is interesting. We, we have demonstrated stuff with a range of them in the past. Um, I think that a lot of those companies still have you know, legacy on-prem integrations with our big broadcast customers that are slowly moving to the cloud and they're moving individual pieces of the puzzle, I guess, to the cloud in the meantime. And as they make those decisions, that's an opportunity for, for Brightcove, given that we have a lot of the pieces that they need for this new IP world. We've had customers, uh, I can think of a large sports uh, broadcaster, who at one point, for example, on mobile web, if they had an article that would have a player prepared with highlights, they wouldn't let you actually watch the highlights if you interacted with that content in a mobile web environment on your iPhone. They would say, please open the app to view these highlights, because that's where they were able to successfully monetize. And when they started working with Brightcove Once, for example, that opened up a bunch of inventory on mobile web, where they chose to use uh, server-side ad insertion to both, I mean, for desktop, this is a, a way around ad blockers, but in the mobile web, it's a way to ensure that um, you can do pre-roll and mid-roll, including if you have a live stream. It's kind of the only way to do live mid-rolls uh, on mobile web would be with a server-side approach. So uh, each individual kind of customer has their own stumbling blocks with mobile monetization. And hopefully they've kind of recognized our expertise in this area to both go with deep client-side SDKs uh, for native approaches as well as a kind of more blanket approach using server-side ad insertion for long-tail devices or challenging areas like mid-rolls for live.